uh, we're bringing to you the M show and we're live from Ghana Post GPS digital address 099-3341 in Kukumemli right here in Accra. And uh, just in case you don't know, you can always go to whether your app store or your, um, your, your, your downloading stores and make sure you download the Ghana Post GPS app and make good use of it. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, as far as um, this app is concerned, we make it worthwhile. Uh, and make sure also you give us what your user experience is as far as uh, this app is, Ghana Post GPS. Okay, now I have my guest in the studio. And um, the Deputy Minister of Communications, Nini George Anda, is in the studio. Thanks for joining me, sir. Good morning, good morning to you. Uh, he's also uh, Member of Parliament for Utu Senior West. And but why, why do you call it the Ghana Post address? The Ghana Post... Um, GPS address. Yes. Why? Is it okay, is what, should, what, what, should, what should be it's the right It's your digital name? address. Okay. So it your, is the app that you're using to generate the Ghana Post GPS, but mm -hmm. your address is your digital address. It's not your Ghana Post GPS address. Well, it, it's based on the communication we also got from... Yeah, okay, so I'm just adding a bit of... Well, I do understand that. Okay. But also we want to make sure that people have a certain mindset to it, that there are many addresses that are generated digitally. So if you say Ghana Post GPS address, no, it no, puts no. it into perspective. No, there's one nationally recognized digital address mm. okay which is your national digital property address system okay so once you generate your address that becomes your digital address okay yeah point number two okay so uh, i also have uh, the member of parliament for uh, tamale north here and uh alasan Suseini is also here good morning to you good morning roland yeah how was your weekend uh, uh by his grace alhamdulillah we thank god but no. i was just wondering if you uh, sending an invoice to the Ghana Post of the Ministry of Yeah, we Communication. have a certain agreement with them. Okay, so you are, you are taking so part of the 3.5 million <laughs> Ghana cities for the it's for it's advert. It's, it's okay. part of the activation. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So the 3.5 million Ghana for adverts, you two, you will get sh some share. Um, I don't okay. know. I don't know whether it's that's good. I, that's I, that's I, I know that I know that they have <laughs> a certain agreement. That's right. For 3.5 million to do Ghana cities, yeah, for yeah, so. Okay, it's fine. But you're uh, telling me in total it is 3.5 million? 3.5 million Ghana cities just to advertise it. Wow. Mm. All right. I'll try and verify that. So you should use your rates. You should use your rates. You should, that, your that, rates. That, you should increase your rates well. The, a, it's not entirely true. Did you hear that? There's a provision for a 12-year campaign. Which is how much? Is it 12 months or 12? Sorry, 12 months campaign. Which is how much? Okay. Which is 3.5 million Ghana cities. Exactly. I mean, I'm not sure that we want to discuss Ghana Post GPS here, but you and I would know that for a national campaign, uh, running for 12 <laughs> months, 3.5 million Ghana cities is really, up, is yeah. really nothing, nothing much. Looks and that cheap, is why, actually. that is why... You know the number of senior high schools... That is why the senior high schools, you know senior like high school they have with children, you, it can uh, help. ...are being leveraged to try and, um, and promote the, 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 the digital addressing mm. system. So, Hini, you may know that uh, as far as um, making sure you have some of these agreements in place, once you have the airtime and it's for LPMs and all that, sometimes the discounts come in and the relationship also... Uh, because this is for a public service. So exactly, but you are talking about 3.5 million Ghana cities for 12 <laughs> months. And I'm looking <laughs> at the way our so children are sleeping, thing. you know, uh, uh, on the veranda, and then some of them are lying on their bellies and writing. I'm just wondering the number of school decks, let's just take 3 million and then 500,000, you know, could have done. He's a member of parliament. <laughs> well, 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 I, think, I think he knows. Okay, it's, it's, that it's there has right. been the I mean procurement process. I'm not, where you see, no, no, you have so been too defensive. I'm just making a point. I'm not criticizing you. You're just spewing out information that is totally it is irrelevant. Just information. Okay, okay. Thanks for uh, <laughs> Please um, correct him. If yes, I'm correcting him. That uh, he's, he's very much aware that the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, have actually issued out um, contracts for the provision of furniture. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, they have they have issued out expression of interest as well, or request for proposals, or um, going through the proper procurement process for libraries, um, dining halls, and dormitories to be to be constructed. Mm -hmm. um, if obviously, if if the unprecedented infrastructure development that they were claiming had really uh, happened, we wouldn't find ourselves where we are. Mm -hmm. Let's let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, before we start the main discussions, though, 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 there was an interesting story over the weekend. Um, there was a footballer, we're told he's 23 years old, uh, stabbed um, his colleague uh, from the Commonwealth Hall uh, to death. It happened on Saturday evening. We're told that they went to their funeral event 
uh, at Dodoa and ultimately they converged at the Commonwealth Hall University of Ghana um, from, from the, the period when they started the journey back to the university campus. Um, the two had uh, some ensuing argument and ultimately by the time they converged at the, at the university campus, they, they, they reached a certain crescendo. I, I, I believe the, the temperaments were up and um, the, the suspects were now told, broke a bottle and stabbed the victim. And uh, it was a tragic event that happened over the weekend. I just want us to have some, especially uh, talking about having that camaraderie between old boys and uh, people of uh, like minds, et cetera, and then this resulting in the incident. Yeah, Roland, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, remind you that last week when we were here, we spoke about uh, how the country was contracting a loan of about uh, 42 million US dollars from the World Bank to improve our senior education, uh, senior secondary education, a loan that you and I are going to pay. And so it makes you wonder if there's no sense in what people say that sometimes uh, if we manage our resources well, like we're told, uh, we may not even need some of these loans. I mean, if you look at the whole brouhaha and controversy around this digital uh, system and you look at the amount of money we are spending there uh, and then going for a loan of, you know, 42 million to improve senior secondary, it tells you, it makes you wonder what our priorities really are. But that's just on the side. I think that on this matter <laughs> of, um, you know, the death of a vandal caused by a vandal. I've not really uh, apprised your mind. Yes, gotten details uh, that can enable me make uh, an emphatic, emphatic, you know, uh, statements on it. But I think that you know, just just reading through, I feel <coughs> I I don't think that, um, especially because they were coming from a funeral. My suspicion is that they may have, you know, taken in some uh, intoxicants. You know, maybe they were not acting based on the right frame of mind. Yes, yes. I mean, sound judgment and all that. Because I wonder what sort of argument can lead to, especially when you are uh, friends and you are a group, you go to a funeral together. I'm sure it was planned together. And then an argument will ensue to the point that one will be tempted to stab the other with a broken bottle. I, I, I suspect that um, maybe some use of either alcohol or drugs may, be, may have uh, been involved. But it is too early. I am not just comfortable with the way uh, some of the reports are, are, are done, where you even have uh, the face of either the victim or the alleged murderer uh, all over on social media. I, I think it's just too early to, to, to make such hasty conclusions. I think we should allow the investigative bodies to do a thorough investigation, and I hope that they will not also treat it as just you know, one of such uh, cases involving young people who are probably uh, over uh, zealous or over exuberant and all that. I think that they should also attach some seriousness to it and, 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 and provide the public with, uh, even if not the public, but the families of these people with the necessary you know, information that can go a long way to perhaps appease them. Uh, because sometimes when you know what really happened, uh, it can bring some closure to you as a family. And so I just want to extend my condolences to the family of the bereaved and also plead with uh, my colleagues that, um, I mean, we should, these days, I think it, it's hard, you, you, had, you hardly find a gathering of young people without the use of, uh, excessive use, I must say, of alcohol, of alcohol and, the and, and the rest. I mean, uh, tramadol, I'm told, it's, 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 it's becoming a very, very huge danger. It's not the use of spice drinks. You know, yeah. And, I, I, I think that our future is bleak with, with that kind of behavior where people have to act based on inducements. And some of these things can, can, can happen 
uh, when 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 people are uh, under such you know uh, uh, intoxicant so i just want to plead with our colleagues that look you can have fun you can i always believe that it's about the state of the mind you know roland mm. i i think that i can do anything i want to do once i condition my mind mm. if it is going to the club uh, to and you want to you know uh, free your mind it's just about conditioning your mind. I don't mm. think you really need any lawyer to help you do that. But it's, 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 I don't think that, you know, drugs has never helped anyone. I don't know anyone who has, who has also been helped before by excessive use of alcohol. So let us focus better. Uh, because if you look at the, 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 the statistics of such deaths, it can always be trace to, mm, to the mm. use of, of, of some of these uh, intoxicants that is why I am I am I am going in that direction because of because of the fact that the facts you know as they relate to this story is not available to me yet to us. okay um, thank you um, I'd like to react to the first um, comment that he made on the is it about the, the priority of yes on the priorities and, and I, I think that no one will challenge a provision for some amount of communication being put behind a national campaign. Um, there are a number of things that we said that we are doing in this economy. One of the key things that we have said, His Excellency the President has repeated this several times, His Excellency the Vice President, who is the head of the economic management team, has also repeated several times that we need to formalize this economy. Um, one way of formalizing this economy is for us to build a smart economy. And in building a smart economy, there are three pillars that we, we have focused on. The first one being that we should have a national ID card where citizens and residents can be identified, their biodata records are taken, the wallet has additional features, additional security features, um, it, is a, it has a final in, in an e-commerce wallet on it. It has a feature that would enable seamless travel um, within the sub-region. I'm sure that if you, if you traveled recently, um, most of the cities or countries that have gone smart, their citizens don't really queue at the immigration point. They just swipe their, their, their ID card, um, which has all their bio data, and then they just walk through. And these are some of the things that we are looking at doing. So having a smart national ID card or the Ghana card is one of the key, the key pillars. Now, as a precursor to having the national ID card, um, we need to have the digital address. So you need to have a digital address for your property, be it your residence or for your business. Now, obviously, that would improve the level of service that government offers to the citizens, it creates an opportunity where there's a closer relationship between government and then citizens and services being delivered, um, emergency services, security, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, of course, it will move into land registrations and all those other areas where we are facing serious crisis and ultimately um, help the Ghana Revenue Authority to be able to identify who's paying their taxes, where the person stays, um, help the local authorities as to property rates, mm. management of sanitation. So it's a bigger picture. Um, the third platform is the interoperability platform, which would enable seamless financial transactions to take place for citizens and residents in, in Ghana. So irrespective of the banking partner that you are on or the mobile network operator that you're having your mobile money service on, you can transact um, these activities seamlessly. So all these three pillars will come together. So in terms of what is a priority, I'm not sure that he's trying to suggest that um, building a smart economy or formalizing the economy isn't smart um, um, and or, or isn't a priority. And the fact that the government has taken a facility to address the challenges in education, obviously it shows that that is also a priority. So um, let us not get a bit confused or let us not do politics with some of, some of these things. Let's look at the bigger picture. Um, let us work together in the best interests of, of Ghana and let us enjoy the benefits that are going to 
to be coming going forward. That's what I just wanted to address on that on that point. No comments, I beg you. Now, on the issue of the Commonwealth, I, to a large extent, I agree. I agree with what he's saying. I mean, um, I have read different stories on social media. Yeah. Um, some stories that say that both of them were former students of Commonwealth Hall. Some of them saying that one of them was not a student of Commonwealth Hall and it was a drama. Um, one of them that says that somebody broke a bottle and attacked the other yeah, person. Yeah. Somebody say that they took a knife from Mr. Chinga's cellar. So they are, like he's saying, there's varied, there's, stories. There's varied stories, okay? <laughs> but first, let me express my condolences to the family of the bereaved because I don't think that there's any justification for anyone to lose their lives through an argument. But like my colleague has said, uh, I believe that the police are also investigating. Um, let us wait till the police conclude their investigations and then we can come and come and make an informed um, um, commentary on this, on this matter. Indeed, um, again, I'm not, I'm not sure whether their actions or inactions were influenced by the use of alcohol. But I believe that every responsible um, alcoholic beverage um, distribution or manufacturing company has a responsible drinking message that you should drink responsibly. As a and caveat. Uh, yes, I mean, and it's, it's not, it is your responsibility for you to drink responsibly, okay? And of course, for the organizers of whatever events that they went to, you would notice if somebody is taking in excessive alcohol. But sometimes some of these people who take what they call a base, before they get they get to the venue, so even when they just take a sip, a sip there, you think that you have been responsible in serving your guests. The, 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 well there's, there's, there's an underlying current. The, uh, there's there's an underlying current <laughs> that that becomes activated. But yes, I mean, let us all let us all be extremely responsible, especially <laughs> especially um, leading up to the season of Christmas, okay, um, where um, a lot of accidents could happen not because you that you are driving has done the wrong thing, but because another user has been irresponsible on the road. Okay, a significant number of accidents happen not because you that is the victim has done the wrong thing, but it's because of somebody else who, who has done the wrong thing coming to, to hit you. And I think that leading up to the period of, of Xmas and the New Year, um, we should all be extremely responsible with the way that uh, we celebrate, especially um, under the influence of alcohol. I mean, the basic thing is that if you drink, don't drive. If you drive, don't drink. I yeah. mean, that's, that's the basic thing. And, and it's not just about driving, but it's even it's about walking. It's about, it's, uh, it's about what you say to, any, to, to somebody to infuriate him and to anger him or her. So let us just be responsible. Let us go into, into the new year with, a, with the peace and joy that it comes with. Wow. Um, the last week, so the week dubbed the anti-corruption week, uh, led to a number of uh, activities. We had a report uh, by the C CDD. Uh, they always have captioned their reports as the Afrobarometer. And uh, in that survey, they tend to gauge uh, citizens' perception about how well government was um, performing or doing with clamping down on corruption, which segments of um, the working population or the population of our country are said to be corrupt. Uh, and sometimes even the report had tend to look at um, which um, public sector or public sector workers or public sectors are said to be more corrupt or deemed corrupt or not. But, but, but these, these have always been the perceptions. And uh, before we got into uh, the, the main mode of um, activating our discussion, an argument ensued between myself and, and Nini about uh, what the content of the Afrobarometer was. And, and, and whether either of us was apprised of the contents. But uh, we know that it's also been captured on the front page of the final newspaper. And uh, the two intros lead are saying that the Ghana Center for Democratic Development has called on government to seize the current pro-anti-corruption political atmosphere or climate in the country at the moment to take decisive and concrete action on the growing list of corruption cases in the country. And apparently, the TDD Ghana appealed to President uh, Ekufuado to take advantage of the collective public support uh, and to tackle the pervasive menace. Uh, and um, uh, let me start with you, Nini. It's, uh, it's about the Afrobarometer and, uh, and what the content really say. And I know you have a lot more to say about um, how it gauges the, the, the current atmosphere and what effort the current government is making and, and how far we've progressed or not as far as the percentages are. Uh, and and I, I start with your... You, you, you I, I think, I think it's, it's, you can say that it's a fair request to make of, of the government um, because, yes, um, we need to address corruption and we need to tackle it by the, um, by from the base. Um, 
And I think that um, the senior minister in, in part of the celebration of the corruption week uh, made the statement that was clear that um, the government would, um, would punish um, corrupt officials or would deal with corruption, but would go through the right process of carrying out the investigations and making sure that there's enough um, evidence to, to drive the prosecutions. So, yes, I mean, we need to do much more in terms of fighting corruption. It's not just the government that needs to do much more in terms of fighting corruption, but you and I as citizens, as, um, as ordinary citizens, also have a significant role to play as far as the fight of corruption is it's concerned. Um, I, I believe that the report um, shows a number, number of things. It, it, it talks about two areas where the perception of increased um, corruption mm. Um, seems to be um, uh, sort of not not gaining the kind of traction that that we expect, or this kind of decline that 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 we all we all expect. And is looking at the police, and is looking at the judiciary. Um, those are the two the two areas. And again, let us let us bear in mind that this is this is about the per perception. And um, I was I was talking to a group of people, and I was saying that as far as the corruption or the perceived corruption within the police service is, is concerned. Um, it, it looks like um, the citizens themselves are, are part of that kind of corruption because you beat a traffic light or you, you are seen talking on phone or you are over speeding on the um, Accra Cape Coast Road and you are stopped by the police. And the first thing is that, oh, so it's, 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 it's a two way stream. I mean, we, or we, we are citizens. Um, need to address these issues as well. We we need to be um, if if there's a giver and taker as far as corruption is concerned. If if there's no giver, there can be no no taker. So we cannot just be um, accusing those that are taking whilst we are still are still giving. And and I believe that um, the the IGP as part of his transformation is looking at a number of images, uh, a, lo a number of initiatives to transform the image of the police service and and one of the things um, um, uh, that I, I know that the police administration are looking at is the body kit and then the dashboard the dashboards of the vehicles that have cameras and the body kits that have that have cameras that are connected to to the gps and this is all part of the the smart city concept that um, is all coming together and very soon my brother will be will be enjoying those those benefits as well so if if if, if those things happen then it means that a policeman who would, who who um, catches you for a crime uh, would not be able to take a bribe because he's being monitored. Uh, so it's going to be like a spot fine that you need to pay, yeah. or it's going to be like giving you a ticket for you to go to court. And I think that some of these things, when they start coming in, would would sort of um, address these uh, these negative perceptions that are that are coming up. But as far as the government is concerned, I believe that. A significant amount of work is being done um, to address corruption. Um, His Excellency the President has stated clearly that every, every allegation of corruption against any of his appointees is, is, is going to be investigated. And I think so far, um, every, every allegation that has come out into the public or that has come out to him, um, his act for the security, <coughs> the, the, the relevant security agencies to, to, to handle it. Um, so yeah, so far so good, but there's a, lo there's a lot more that needs to be done. But significantly, um, if you look at the report um, over the past, I think it's since 2002, 2002. 2002 it's only in 2017 um, there was a, a, a consistent decline. As uh, far as the graph was concerned? Yes. Okay. In terms as of, of the, the willingness to fight? As far as the, the perception of the public was with the willingness of government to fight corruption, there was a, there was a consistent decline since... 2002 okay and it's only in 2017 that it has showed up that is almost at par with the 2002 um, level that that which was the, the highest over the period that that these um, um, reports have been have been churned out so um, it's it's some amount of good news but uh, for us and I'm sure Suhi, uh, my brother Suhin would agree with me that um, there's no tick in the box or clap your hands and say that we're done with with corruption as far as perception of individuals are concerned. We need to keep on going um, and, and, and if, well, if there's anything like achieving a 101% perception that 
the government has totally addressed the issue of corruption <laughs> is concerned, then yes, that's where we need to we need to get to ulti ultimately. But we all have a role to play as far as this is concerned. Uh, those of us that are, are working um, in, in in public institutions that are, are ask for uh, some some way to push paper. I mean, these are things that shouldn't happen. Okay, if you look at if you look at the part of the transformation that is happening with the with the e, e transformation initiatives that are taking place, the registration of businesses are now being done electronically. So they are we are removing the human element of 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 of, of registering your business, which is a key area where where there's amount of corruption taking place. Uh, if you're looking at, at the that the level of interface. Yes, okay. if you're looking at the DVLA, okay, the process is also being being automated, okay, and so um, once we can remove the the likelihood of somebody being influenced to do what he's being paid for, okay, then those issues are, are going to be addressed. If you look at the court system, I mean, there's a lot of um, e-transformation that is that is taking place there as well. So um, I, I, we we haven't reached the end of the road as far as that fight is concerned, but. Um, there has been some significant work that has been done, building on what previous administrations administration have done, and the, the commitment of His Excellency the President, the vision of His Excellency the President, as far as fighting corruption is concerned, is never is never in doubt. Cannot be disputed by anyone. Mm. So in 2002, we had 63 percent as the perception uh, from the public about what the commitment is of government in fighting corruption. It came to 55% in 2005, 56% uh, in 2008, then dipped uh, to 54, uh, 50, 43% in 2012, went further down in 2014 to 25%, and now just shot up to 60%. So from 25% to 60% in a year, it's, it's significant. Yeah, it within a uh, two, three year period. At the end of the day, it also gives an indication of what the commitment is. Would you say it's a reflection o on the ground? Uh, but is because go the media is talking about it uh, being a reflection of what the position of government is on, on, on various actions of corruption and what its own policy intents will be? Well, um, thank you, Roland. Um, when I spoke of um, our priority as a people, it related more to the fact that we have free applications like the Asasi application and we are paying this much for you know this other application that is practically going to do the same thing when we have competing needs as a country so it was what i meant when i spoke of 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 uh, you know our priority and as for uh, the talk of how to make an economy smart it is sweet uh, i just hope that Ghanaians will focus more on the deliverables and not the talk because early this year the president we saw beautifully got a national ID card and we're told that by the end of this year, we're going to all be given national ID cards. As we speak, it is only the president that has that card, not even his vice, not even the speaker, not even his 110 ministers. So the talk can be sweet, but we all know that what we need to focus on is the deliverables and whether or not the good money we are throwing at these very good initiatives are really giving us good results. That's all. Now, on the issue of perception of corruption, it's a difficult matter to assess. Because, you see, I've always said that the people we perceive to be corrupt mostly are people in political positions. Now, these people do not come from mass or from <laughs> Jupiter to become political figures or heads. Mm. They come from amongst us. And sometimes I'm tempted to believe that our perception of corruption is driven by what possibly we would have done if we were in the positions that people are in. So for example, I feel that if I were in honorable deputy minister's position, I won't buy fuel, I won't have, I won't do any, I won't sign any document without getting paid, I mean getting some weight. And so even before he does it, my assumption is that he's doing it. So and that I is I why. I don't understand your comment. 
No, he's talking I'm giving on an the example. part of the well, I'm, talking about, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the perception. You, you, use yourself. Right? I'm talking about. You are. He's making you feel uncomfortable. You use your phone. You make it seem as if I'm participating in am. I'm talking about how the perception is generated usually. It is. It is sometimes based on what we think we will do. And that's why it's very common for us within our communities to say that Roland was stupid. He didn't have, have a house after becoming a minister. So he's corrupt. No, he's stupid. He didn't he have, have a house, house after, after becoming, becoming a minister. Yeah, yeah. You get it. Because and I know one particular minister in the Kufo government who was. <laughs> who do you get it? Because well, our, 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 our understanding of such an op office is that you should go and amass wealth. In fact, I recall asking friends some time ago when I was appointed to a board and I got congratulatory messages. One Which sentence that a civil aviation authority. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that ran through was, don't forget me. Don't <laughs> forget me. And I'm sure my uh, uh, I'm sure he gets honorable colleague here got it. As well. Do you get it? And what I, I, I called some of them back to say was, what do you mean by don't forget you? You only get sitting allowance at the board. No, I How mean, many times are, you you saying, are, you, are you saying <laughs> I should share the workload with you? Is that what you mean by I shouldn't forget you? And did you see, did, if you did, don't did have you try a mind. To ask them that? No, I did. Oh, I did. Uh, I did. Well, 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 did you you know, but I know you know what I will get. <laughs> I mean, but you see, that it, it, for me, I was trying si to situate that they are thinking into the fact that, look, that is not my intention. I don't think that this is, this is a reward. I don't think that, I don't see this as a place that I should go and get something for you and I to share. If it is anything to share, then we should share, you know, the workload. But I'm, I'm, I'm speaking generally about how perception of corruption is generated. And that is why it is a very, very difficult issue to uh, tackle in this country. But fortunately, mm -hmm. Roland, for us in the NDC, I can speak on authority that international rating agencies have actually put the NDC's commitment as expressed through research above, you know, any other record that our opponents have ever achieved. I'm talking about the Transparency International report. And if you look at it, I mean, our best performance, the NDC's best performance when it comes to commitment in the fight against corruption, you know, uh, 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 I mean, the, the, uh, our worst performance is, is the NPP's best performance. The NDC's worst performance is the NPP's best performance. Now, again, when you talk about the generation of perception, the way we also even discuss each other, political opponents, the way we discuss each other and what we do, also feeds into that perception. I remember when His Excellency the President Anakufado met the media in his 100 days, uh, to mark his 100 days in office, he said something. When he was asked about the prosecution of former officers, he said that, you know, most of the things that they talked about, when you go into details, as he was now getting to find out, they are not really true. They are just perceptions. But they were working on those that are possibly true to, you know, ensure that they prosecute. But it then tells you, and, and, and you don't just stop there. Just last week, the senior minister, uh, Osafo Mafo, also said that they are now gathering evidence so they can build, you know, a watertight docket to secure, you know, convictions when they prosecute. What does that tell you? That the... The, the barrage of corruption allegations that they made, most of them were made without evidence, without, without any, any serious basis. And that is why in government after 12 months, they tell us that they are still gathering evidence. When they made it seem, for example, that all President Mahama and his government needed to do was to walk into Woyomi's house to take his money, I mean to take the money that the state paid him. 12 months down the line, the same excuses, this not excuses, the same, you know, exam, uh, what do you call it, explanations that were given by the previous government for its inability to retrieve the money are the same, you know, explanations that this current government is giving, court, legal, and all those things. So you see... But they are genuine explanations, you say. I am saying that they rejected them. So if we want to behave like them in opposition, we will also reject them.
But I am saying that these are some of the ways the perceptions are generated, not based on facts, not based on anything, but just based on political expediency, the fact that you want to, to, to win political power and, 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 look, and look favorable. Those are some of the, the issues. But you see, when you talk about, I don't want to, I don't want to discredit the CDD, but that is why I, s the CDD report, that's why I, because they are very useful, you know, things in the report that we can all as a people, <laughs> you know, use to inform ourselves in, in how we, we plan, you know, our, our contribution towards the growth of this country. Very, very useful, very, very, you know, remarkable. But you see, our people say that, um, maybe not just our people, that when it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's obviously a duck. And you know that for the NDC, repeatedly, we have had issues with the CDD, even from the Jerry Rawlings' era. We've had issues with the way we think the CDD is positioned. And so when you get consistent reports, that that's feed into that position we have always taken of their bias and their unfairness to our political party. You are left with no other option than to think that perhaps there is really something so more So you're saying that what? When, what I'm saying, what I'm when saying the is NDC is in power, what I'm saying is the that ratings that are always not good. You, you just read it, yeah, but, but you compare, <laughs> it, <laughs> when you compare it to the Transparency International, which is an international rating agency with no interest whatsoever in our politics. And you said the CDD and has interest. It's a contrast. And, 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 so, and, and then you have an agency, I mean, Roland, I mean, put what the CDD has, you know, put out aside. And tell me, in 12 months, what has the NPP government done to shoot perception of commitment to fight corruption you from 24% to 60? Tell me, what have they done? What do you, what do you think will is be it, the issue? Is it, is it the A-plus allegations that they have done something about that has given confidence? Is it, is well, it, Shraj, is it the Canada japon has come out with Is it the Canada japon issues? Is it the Abronye issues? Is it the, I mean, just tell me, but should I'm I, talking about, answer, but I'm talking about, yeah, will, uh, I'm talking we'll about a previous answer. government that is supposed to have scored 24%. Yet this was a government that was prosecuting its own people, dismissing its own people on mere basis of speculation of corruption. Speculation. Dismissing people. Victoria Hammer is an example. You know, yet it was scoring 20% of commitment level. Prosecuting its own officer, officers, you know, reassigning people, retrieving monies from people who were said to have corrupted in, in different ways. But it was scoring low. So tell me one year what the NPP government has done to secure that high. So the problem level. will be the, so the CDD. I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking, I'm raising these questions. And I'm, I'm situating it in the fact that the NDC previously has always had issues with the CDD. And I'm also comparing it to the international rating, which is not consistent with what the CDD does over the years. And I'm just leaving it for the general public to decide. I am not accusing the CDD. Right. I think their job, when you look at the report, has very, very useful findings that we can all use. Okay. But I'm just raising some of these, you know, as rhetorical questions and, if you like, uh, uh, top provoking issues for the Ghanaian people to make up their and, own and, and, and uh, as, you, as you react to all that, you, you, you look at the Afrobarometer and what the outcomes are, uh, you get to find that you have, uh, well, beyond the police, you have judges and magistrates, national government officials, members of parliament, district chief executives, traditional rulers, presidents and officials in his office, and local government representatives in that category always uh, said to be most of them between the percentage of 59 to about 28 always being corrupt. Now, the question I want to ask is, is it that we have a certain predisposed mind as a people that if you are in government and close to government circles, not necessarily let's say a political, as in the states as a government, uh, the tendency for you to be corrupt is always high. So as a people, we always have a certain predisposed mind that when Roland gets into a political position or a state position, he's already corrupt. And is that also perhaps not fueled by the fact that the media constantly is always talking about it. And so it is 
well, perceive that that bracket of officialdom or people who operate in that level of state are always corrupt? Um, well, let me, let me react to what he was saying, then I'll come to, I'll come to yours. Um, first, let me try and educate my brother a bit that Asasi GPS is a generic address generation platform, okay, that is owned by the developers of the Ghana Post GPS platform, Vogacom. Asasi GPS, if it's being used for an enterprise as like what Ghana Post is using to generate the GPS, would obviously be, it will obviously come at a fee. You see, we should understand that, for example, if you are using Google Maps for navigation as an individual, all you pay is your data tariff. But if you go to Google and you tell Google that you are building an application and as part of your application, you want to collaborate with them because it's an enterprise. If you go in as an enterprise, you're going to pay a fee for it. So if they are saying that there are free apps for generating digital addresses, which is one thing that I keep on saying, that the highest level of, of the service that could have been done by the previous government was to have known that there was a free digital application app available and for which they didn't make it available to Ghanaians for us to be able to generate our digital addresses. Okay, so again, let us not politicize these issues. Let us understand what the issues are, okay, and let us move forward. Now, on the issue of the perception of corruption, um, Roland, what is perception? Okay, we should, we, should, we should all realize that at a point in time, perception may not necessarily be the reality, but with time, the reality is built out of the perception that, that people have. I hope you understand where, where I, I'm I, coming from. I get from. your point. Okay. So if, if, for example, we are on this program, and every time that my brother, Honorable Suhini, comes to this program, he's wearing a cream costume, okay? But we see him here once a week. But that is what he wears every time. Some people would have the perception that he has only one dress. dress. You understand? <laughs> but it's because they've seen him only one once a week, maybe ten weeks continue. In the same color. You understand? Or in the same dress. Like in the same in the same kind of dress. But unfortunately that's the perception that the people may have. That is not necessarily the reality. If we come to this program and you every time that I'm trying to talk, you cut me in. Okay? <laughs> no, that doesn't happen to you. Which doesn't happen to you. You have to add that. It happens to me more on this show. I, I, I don't want to react to that. I don't want to react to that. Okay. Some people may have the perception that you are you are being unfair to me. Okay. But maybe we would have had a, um, a discussion before the show and told me that I shouldn't go in this direction. So if you've given me some guidelines. And I deliberately come onto the show, which you are hosting, and I decide that I will go against your guidelines. You have every right to cut me. But the person that is watching may not know what conversation has happened. And so the so perception will be. So the perception will be that you are not that. exactly. Yeah. You understand. So perception is something that is extremely dicey. The fact that His Excellency the President, okay, has committed to fighting corruption, okay, the fact that His Excellency the President has said that, as far as I am president. Any of my government appointees, any of my appointees that has an allegation of corruption against him or her, I'm authorizing the relevant authorities to fight. The fact that we have gone through the process of the Office of the Special Prosecutor, which has been passed by Parliament, okay? These are, these are significant actions that have happened under the administration of His Excellency the President. Actions or okay? rhetoric. Please, I, I, Sorry. I, I think I didn't. Sorry, I could have button when you were talking. Okay, I kept my cool. Okay, these are significant actions and positions that have been taken by His Excellency the President. You may decide to rubbish the CDD report. Okay, that is your prerogative. 
But as far as this is concerned, we are discussing the CDD report. Okay? As far as this discussion is concerned, you are discussing the CDD report. So <laughs> don't behave like the person who learned about biology and when he went to the, uh, he learned about the fish in biology when he went into the exam, is a frog that came and tried to turn the question around. Okay? CDD report, as we are discussing, there was a downward decline. A number of initiatives have been taken. The trend is showing upwards. However, there are, st there are still significant things that need to be done. And that's why when I started, I was like, it's a fair request to make of the president. It's a very fair request to make of the president. And I'm sure that the president would, would, would be excited to take up, to take up that, that challenge that, that has been made to him. Because he knows that we are making positive, positive um, uh, moves as far as the fight against corruption is, 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 is concerned. And indeed, <laughs> the, the priorities of His Excellency the President are clear. <laughs> the priorities of His Excellency the President are clear. And that is why, even within the African region, okay, just, just, just over the weekend, he was rec recognized as one of the leading, lead, one of, one of the leading um, presidents in, the, in, 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 in Africa. Okay? <laughs> and you are aware of, you are aware of what happened. Okay, so... So Let the Paul Gatami and uh, exactly. Alpha Conde. Exactly. And, uh, okay. So 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 let us let us let us look at what the challenges are. Okay. A number of institutions have been mentioned. You and I, when we sit down. Ah, so he wanted to know what really are what really are the actions that have I've been taken. Mentioned, I've mentioned. I mean, even even the because they had raised issues of bust. They had raised even issues even of uh, what wasn't yeah. wasn't the bust issue investigated? Really. No, no, Roland, was the boss issue investigated um, or not investigated? Well, to, to my mind, yes. On yes. On, on in the status quo. Yes. yes, it was investigated. Uh, okay. The issue of uh, the deputy. Uh, was that not investigated? Yeah, the charge was that not investigated? It, uh, okay. Yeah, well, um, um, Wayome, as, as, as are, we, are we not in court with, with Wayome? Are we not retrieving the money? Did we not. Did we well, not. The did government did we not retrieving the money. No, exactly. but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Exactly. Hold on. Hold on. Yet they we're are scoring they low. Uh, you, had, you had a former attorney general that said that there was nothing wrong. Are you a former attorney general? Where's the former attorney general? Betty Mosi Drisu. Okay, that said that there was nothing wrong with that. And what happened to her? But, well, we, but listen, look, we, we, are, we are dealing with <laughs> issues <laughs> of perception. Okay, if an attorney general under your government mm. says that there's nothing wrong with Wyoming, Okay, you cannot fault the people in having a perception that your government may be corrupt because this is your chief legal advisor. You understand? This is your chief legal advisor. So, in each, as far as the perception is concerned, I think that we are not, we are, or that as far as the reality is concerned, we are, we, are, we are making positive strides. And of course, we are building on what the previous administration had done. Okay, but it is about the vision of the president. It's about what the president says. It's about the direction that the president gives. And these are the issues that we are talking about. So, Henny. If he talks, I'll come back because he started. No, you started. No. You, you, you started, started on the subject of On this one. You okay. started. Okay. And okay. you have, you have I, done I gave you full five you minutes. You okay, talk, talk, talk. You only talk for five minutes, so I'll give you only five minutes. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, best of all, I, 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 find, I find it very interesting that um, um, the Honorable Deputy Minister was, you know, struggling to you know, uh, 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 rename rhetorics as actions. I mean, the president says, I'll deal with people, I'll deal with people, I'll deal with people, and that is enough to be described as an action. When indeed two people in his office are now nicknamed, I don't want to use that nickname. In fact, one, two of his senior most appointees at the presidency are now nicknamed chief of something. I don't want to use it. but. What really, practically, was done? Yes, you will be told that there was an investigation. What became of that investigation? We all know that the police officer who was involved in that investigation was later caught on tape agreeing that she did a cover-up. And an interesting thing happened. She uh, was promoted. No, no. She was correct promoted. The fact. Correct I mean, the fact. Yet, yet, that is what Roland, you have a responsibility she to correct the fact. She was caught on tape agreeing with A-plus that because they are in the same government, they just have to cover up. 
what happened? She was promoted. Her boss was dismissed. You talk about Kennedy Ajapon, who is one of the leading members of the of the of the party, talking about you know uh, the national identification uh, 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 authority contracts and how some people took some kickbacks and 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 and, and, and awarded the contracts. And this is an insider of the government. And you say that should not that that should not that hasn't contributed in any way to the perception of corruption against this government. But what Betsy Idrisu is supposed to have said, uh, you know, uh, should be the reason. But you see, uh, I can see that your, your producers are, are, are wrapping you up. So I will make it easier for you. You know, when he was talking about the CDD, you don't remember the CDD, and, and when I was just raising those issues, remember it was in 2016 or 2015 thereabout that the CDD first introduced the presidency into their ratings. And we had issues with that when we were in government and talked about, I mean, how many people even deal with the presidency to come to that conclusion. Now, again, this year, another interesting thing has happened. They have introduced an area that talks about Ghanaians want corrupt officials prosecuted. Yes. Ghanaians want corrupt, previous government corrupt officials. In fact, when you read the report, that's what it yes, says. Yes, yes, yes. Do you get it? They have introduced it again. We've and then the, this the story is done by the Finder newspaper, which is a pro NPP newspaper. Oh. Who oh, Finder is pro? It is owned by okay. Mr. Awal, who is the minister of uh, the Yes, Department. yes, yes. It's, it's pro NPP newspaper. So now it says that CDD wants present, fight corruption now or forget about Ghana beyond aid. And it talks about how the government should take advantage of the 64% of Ghanaians who are saying they should prosecute the corrupt officials from the previous administration. Is it previous so administration? That's what Let it is. Reading. That's what it says. You know, so it, th th this report, th the report itself talks about you previous think, administration. You think the report is biased or what? I am just raising these issues. Th for me, they, they are interesting. Where is the previous administration? For me, they are this is a newspaper report. No, you don't no, expect. No. Well, we are discussing. You remember you said we are discussing the report. Yes. We yes, are discussing the report. You said that it says that and previous the administration. The report talks about previous it government. It doesn't talk about previous it administration. It does. I have seen the report. If you have seen it, it is you clear. will know. It says that 64 percent of Ghanaians want corrupt officials prosecuted. No. It never makes this reference to previous... This is the newspaper report. We have seen that the report <laughs> was... The report <laughs> was on... on <laughs> report <laughs> since last week, we started Roland, discussing I think that again, some of you these see, things... I think that it is correct. Your I think that it should you address see, you, 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 you were not happy when I even no, interjected a little. No, but you are the paper. You are you you see, our time is up. You said that we were discussing the report, so we shouldn't set exam questions that are not related to the report. What was the question? So the report... I'll ask us to him. It's a member of TAF. It's a member of Parliament for Tamale North. And Nenyi George... Anda is a Wutu Senior West uh, MP, and um, he's it's, also it's, it's, a Deputy it's, it's Minister it's of Communications. Thank you for joining me, Thank you thing. very much. Yeah, Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs> 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 well, we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have a lot more for you on the show, and uh, please do stay up.